Hello and welcome to another Unexplained Possibilities 10 list. This time we'll be going over 10 stories involving black eyed children encounters. All these stories can be found on Reddit and Unexplained Possibilities cannot confirm nor deny if the stories on this list are true or just fabrication. That's for you, the listener, to decide. So with that said, I'm Melvin the Crimson Taurus, and let's get into it. Number 10. Black-Eyed Child on Elevator I have one experience with black-eyed kids. I was on vacation with my parents a long time ago, was still a kid myself, and it was very late at night. I had just gotten back to the hotel but wanted to go back downstairs and kill some time in the arcade and decided to take the elevator. What happened next was one of the most confusing, terrifying experiences of my life. I get in and go down and in the elevator as it gets closer to the bottom floor I suddenly feel terror, terror like I've never felt before in my life. The feeling, it was so specific. The door opens and standing in front of me are two kids with huge pitch black eyes staring at me. One kid looked a bit older than the other and was taller. They were both wearing some average looking clothes. They said nothing, but they were beyond threatening. I mean, I would have rather the door open to someone holding a gun to my face than these creatures with the feeling they gave off. I was in shock for a second and immediately closed the door and got up as fast as I could. My little brain was a mix of traumatized and highly confused at what happened. Needless to say, I never used the elevator alone or went into the hotel arcade late at night ever again. This happened before I even knew that other people encountered them. Didn't even have decent internet at the time. I never saw one outside of a dream ever again that usually presented itself as a young girl with long dark hair and large fang-like teeth. Number 9. Black-Eyed Kid Attempted Carjacking on March 17, 2008, I had my one and only encounter with a black-eyed kid. Before my experience, I had never heard of anything having to do with black-eyed kids. I was 12. I was sitting outside of a hairdresser's in an old Chevy pickup, waiting for my mom to get her hair cut. About 15 minutes had passed and I saw some kid walking back and forth along the sidewalk in front of my parked car. At first, I thought I recognized him as one of my friends from school, so I banged on the front windshield until he looked my way. It was not anyone I knew. At this point, I was not scared at all, not yet. The boy walked over to the side of my car and just stares. I think to let me get a good look at his eyes, to freak me out. Let me tell you, if you have never seen a black eyed kid, you have no idea what to imagine. Pupils black as the night sky, the boy whispers, you must let me in. And then I lock the car doors and duck down into the space below the seats. Five minutes later, he was gone. When my mother got into the car, she told me a boy with black eyes had came into the hairdressers had insisted for my mother to give him the keys to the car. She refused. Thank God she did. Number 8. Black-Eyed Woman in the Cemetery In 96-97, I lived in a fairly old terraced house with the cemetery at the end of the road. Cliché, I know, but it's an important detail. Nothing remarkable about the house or the area, it was just convenient for college. Anyway, 
I was up late one night on the computer in my bedroom, which looked out onto the street. It was about 2 or 3 a.m. For whatever reason, probably to give my eyes a rest, I wandered over to the window and looked down the road in the direction of the cemetery, although it was too far down the street for me to see, and I saw three people walking slowly down the road. I could see that they were quite old and appeared to be dressed in funeral clothes, which, given the hour, was weird. There were two women and a man. I put their ages at about 80, and the woman in the middle was being steadied and guided by the other woman and the man. And as they came closer, I got the impression that she was upset. My first thought was that, given their age, she had recently buried her husband and grief had caused her to behave slightly irrationally, causing her to try to be out near the cemetery at that hour, and that the other two were friends or relatives trying to look after her and get her home. Anyway, it was all interesting enough for me to carry on watching as they got closer to the house. Just outside the front of the house was a street lamp. I watched them as they made their way past, but when they got to the lamp post, they all stopped, and the upset woman in the middle looked up at me and grinned. This was when things got weird. The grin became sort of a grimace, and if there was any color in her face to start with, it was now dead white. At that point, I realized I was staring right into her eyes, but her eyes were pitch black. Time sort of dilated. If you've ever crashed a car, the final split second before you make impact seems to drag out as you process more information than normal in the time frame. It was that sort of thing. I'm sure we only made eye contact for a second, but it felt like several minutes as my peripheral vision faded and I felt like all I could see was these two black holes in her face drawing me in. Although the distance between us didn't change, she somehow felt like she was coming closer and I was kind of aware, although I couldn't honestly say I could see them at that point, the two people with her were just continuing to look down the road as if frozen but waiting for this woman to finish whatever she was doing. I was suddenly hit with this intense feeling of dread and panic so I threw myself on the floor. As soon as I broke in her gaze, I felt pretty stupid that this upset old woman who clearly needed help had spooked me so badly. So I looked out the window again and there was no sign of them. It was a longish straight road and the house was towards the middle, so Linford Christie would have had trouble getting out of sight in that time. I can't explain what happened to him. It's as if they weren't there to begin with. Number 7. Black-Eyed Girl on the Road School had let out and I was staying at a friend's, which between friends and I is cold for I'll drop my stuff then wander the neighborhood at night because I can't sleep. Now, don't get me wrong, I've had plenty of strange things happen to me. On one of my night walks, I had a homeless person offer me a duck, and on another, I was even followed by a car full of drunk guys. But this one was different. I was clear to the road, wandering in trees because if one of my mom's friends saw me, I totally in trouble. That's when I saw two figures that came out of the woods. They looked smaller and younger than me, and I was instantly curious. I followed the kids, staying quiet as they kept watching for something, when suddenly the little girl, she seemed to be younger than the boy, stood in the middle of the road. Of course, I bolt out and tackle her as a car comes, the car nearly missing both of us. When I looked down, the little girl was more annoyed than happy or grateful. However, what got my attention were her eyes. 
they were completely black. It was like staring into a void. I couldn't look away. It was as if I was being hypnotized. I felt a rush of fear so strong that it overwhelmed everything. I still don't know how long that lasted or if anything happened, but next thing I knew, the boy was ripping me off the girl with surprising strength. By now, I'm completely freaked. I couldn't bring myself to check his eyes and see if they were black like the girls and risk whatever that strange hypnotizing thing was happening again. Doing what I felt best, I literally slipped from my hoodie. Doing what I felt best, I literally slipped from the hoodie he had a hold of and took off sprinting. I could hear them running after me, yelling for me to wait, to stop, and I don't know why, but I almost did. I ended up sprinting through backyards and doubling around until I couldn't hear them before going to my friends. My friend was one of the first who I told the story to regarding black-eyed kids. I'm not crazy. I know it really happened. It had to have. Number 6. Black-Eyed Child Visits for the Holiday Around Christmas, I was 14 years old and a bunch of family members were over at my house. At that time, I lived in the middle of the main woods. Now, one night, this kid shows up out of nowhere and knocks on the back door and started asking for a ride. I have never seen him before and knew everyone in the community since it was very small. He asked for a ride a bunch of times and seemed really annoyed that other people hadn't given him one. That in itself is pretty weird because we didn't see him come down the driveway and if he was at the back door he'd had to have walked through about two miles of woods in knee deep snow with miscellaneous half frozen bogs and streams to have gotten there from someone else's house in that direction. Eventually my uncle Gary offers him a ride and asks me to come along with them. We were weirded out by the kid, but my uncle and I were like, forget it, let's take him home. It seemed like a good excuse to get away from the family for a while. He was weird, but we figured it might have been a family member of a neighbor or something, so it wouldn't take too long to get him wherever he was supposed to be. It was the middle of winter, and he was only wearing a gray hoodie, jeans, and a pair of sneakers. So we were concerned since it was cold, deep cold. In fact, a week later, it would end up hitting negative 40. He had the hood on, but we didn't really think anything of it since it was cold. We leave the house and the kid looks kind of surprised when we leave the house. The kid follows us into the car and just keeps saying things like, oh, I was out for a walk. I don't get why people are so weird about giving me a ride. I'm just a kid. He didn't really answer any questions except for telling us where to drive. I don't even remember if he told us his name. It was almost like he had a limited number of phrases rehearsed and that wasn't one of them. He sat in the front seat and I sat in the back. I could tell my uncle was a bit unnerved because he kept the inside light on in the car and claimed, sometimes it stays like that. We were both pretty big guys. He was about 5'10", 240, and, and I was 6 feet and active, in-shape kid. In comparison, he was a bit of a small fry, but we were still a bit skeeved by the situation. We figured this kid was from a house a mile or two down the road. But he wasn't. He had us turn right off our road, the opposite way from Portland Standish, the great remainder of humanity, and any place someone could have feasibly walked from in the dead of winter. He had us drive about 20 miles deeper into the woods, way in the middle of nowhere, and just halfway down this dark, empty road, he's like, this is it. 
even though there was absolutely nothing around, he got out of the car, he didn't say thanks, he didn't offer a handshake, nothing. He just kind of stood there facing us for a bit while we watched and waited for him to do something, but he never did. So we backed the car up to turn around and when we were far enough back, the headlights hit him. I could finally see well enough under the hood to see that he had these glossy black eyes like an elephant seal. We turned around and drove away, but he just stood there on the side of the road and watched us. Number 5. The Black-Eyed Woman I have always loved reading scary, creepy stories for the thrill of the scare. Intrigued by the black-eyed children and always wondered if it was true. Until now. It was a Saturday night around 9 p.m. and no one was home. Everyone had gone out for dinner and I being eight months pregnant felt nauseous and exhausted after having worked 10 hours. I was in my kitchen rummaging through the fridge for a light snack when someone knocked on my front door. This surprised me because my family has keys. They would just open the door right away. Also in my neighborhood, you know not to open the door unless you're expecting company. The knocking continued. I decided to not answer and they would go away as one would do to solicitors or unwanted company. But no, the knocking continued. Now irritated, I go to the front door and look out the peephole to see a woman in her 50s just standing there, staring down at my welcome mat. It seems harmless, I think to myself, and stupidly open the door. But the screen door is still locked and standing between her and I. Awkwardly, she hasn't looked up and hasn't said a word, so I ask, can I help you? And she stays quiet, then without any emotion, more like some type of monotone voice, she asks if she can use my phone. I said I don't have one, because one, it didn't seem like an emergency, and two, People snatch phones and run in my city, so I was paranoid. She asked again, more demanding to use my phone, and then demandingly says, let me in, and looks up at me. Her eyes are solid black and holds her eye contact almost smirking. I remember hearing about the stories I've read, all children, but here was this older lady with black eyes. The only way I can describe about how she made me feel is that I felt threatened. I looked away but quickly looked back at her eyes. Something about them draws you in. I tell her no and ask her to leave and begin to slowly close the door but she practically screams, let me in. Startled, I turn on the porch light hoping to scare her away. What she does next confused me to this day. She can clearly see me now and looks down at my pregnant tummy and turns around and walks away. That's it. No looking back, no nothing. I was dumbfounded. Number 4 I let the black-eyed children in. I've read many accounts of these black-eyed kids, but I don't think any really come close to what happened to me when I let two into my house. Some people think that if you let them in that they will kill you. Obviously I can say this is not true. This is what happened. I was sitting in my bedroom at home when I heard a knock on the door. It was not too late, so I didn't hesitate opening the door to whoever it was. When I opened it, there were two children standing there. Both were looking at the floor. Yes, I said. 
The taller one asked if they could come in as they were lost and the other boy needed the toilet. I live in an area where it's very easy to get lost, so I just assumed that they were telling the truth and was looking down because they were shy, even though the one talking spoke very confidently. So I let them in. The one who needed the toilet just walked in and straight up the stairs, so I shouted, it's on the right! I don't know why I didn't find this strange, but most toilets are upstairs, and as he was young, I didn't think anything of it. I told the other one that the phone was down the hall. Thanks, he said, and he started to walk down the hall. I followed him, and then I suddenly came over with a really awful feeling like something bad was going to happen. I became very nervous and a bit shaky. I still can't explain how that happened. The boy stopped at the phone and paused. Everything okay? I asked. He turned to me and looked up and that's when I saw his eyes. And trust me, I will never get that picture out of my head. I was so scared that I couldn't even scream. As I turned to run down the hall, the other kid was standing at the end. I became very dizzy and struggled to stand up. I became very dizzy and struggled to keep on my feet. He walked closer to me and said that they've been sent to collect me. I still couldn't bear to look into his eyes. I pushed away from him and ran into my front room and slammed the door shut. I was in so much shock about what was happening, I couldn't think straight. This is something that you don't even expect to happen even in movies. After standing against the door for around an hour or so, I finally got the courage to make a run for the back door. So I ran to it and unlocked it. I ran to the back of my garden and jumped over the fence, not once looking back. My friend lives close, so I ran to his house. I told him the story, and as I guessed, he was a bit skeptic about what I had said. I convinced him to come back with me. When we got there, we looked around the whole house but couldn't find them. Ever since that happened, I always have a dream that these kids with the black eyes stand over my bed with their hands stretching to me. I hope to God that I never see those things again. Number 3. You Don't Forget the Black-Eyed Children I was standing in the shower, warm water hitting my back, the steam relaxing my entire body. I was stepping out when I was suddenly filled with an overwhelming sense of dread and worry. I felt dizzy and disoriented. I tried to shake the feeling. So, I blow-dried my hair and put on my dress. I heard knocking at the front door, but I felt sheer terror. I didn't want to go downstairs, and I didn't want to answer the door. My dog started growling and barking and scratching the door. Hello? I need to use your phone. At this point, I was obligated. I ran downstairs and opened the door. I left the storm door shut and locked it. So, I was able to talk to So I was able to talk through the screen. It was a girl about 13 with long blonde hair, wearing a bright blue hoodie and torn jeans. Next to her was another little girl about 6 or 7. She had short blonde hair a little above shoulder length, and she was wearing a pink dress with flowers on it. They both were looking down, so I couldn't see their face. Um, hi, can I help you girls? We need to use your phone. We're not from around here. We're lost and our mother is worried, the older girl mumbled. I felt compelled to let them in, but I wasn't willing to risk anything with that horrible feeling I had. I heard many stories about the black-eyed kids and researched a lot into it. These stories have made me terribly curious and intrigued me greatly. 
I knew too much about them to deny what was happening. You can use my cell phone, but you can't come in. We've been outside all day, ma'am. Please, we're cold. It's... It was a warmer day in the high 50s compared to what it has been. I can't let you in. If you need to call your mom, you can use my... You can use my cell. That's all. So I stepped out onto the porch, not knowing what to expect. I noticed the older girl got more tense, like she was starting to get angry. Please, ma'am, we are very tired and we have to call our mom. Her tone had gotten more aggressive. It was unsettling. Look at me. What? No, we need to use your phone. I said, look at me. If I can't see your eyes, then I won't let you in. They both looked up at me. They had large, dead black eyes. It felt as if my soul was being drawn into them. My heart sank. These... These are the pricks I had read about. These soulless, violent children were standing in front of me. I felt so compelled to say yes. I almost felt guilty for being so aggressive in my response but I know what they are I can't let my compassion overtake my common sense what are you I know those eyes what are you children what do you want she said nothing she tilted her head and stared directly into my eyes it felt almost hypnotic it's a feeling I can't really explain. They looked at each other and smiled. Ma'am, we are two girls who need to call their worried mother. Please, this is the last time I'll ask nicely. She kept that twisted smile on her face and just glared at me. I backed into the door, opened it, and slammed it in their face. I locked the door. I walked through the house in a panic, making sure all the windows and doors were locked. I heard knocking on the window. I backed myself against the wall and peered over just enough where they couldn't see me, but I could see them. I crawled on the floor to another room. They then came to that side of the house and began knocking on the windows of the room I was in. It's like they could see me no matter how much I tried to hide. In a panic, I called the police. Help! I need somebody. There are some girls knocking on my windows and they won't go. I told them I can't let them in the house. Please come. I'm scared. My dad is good friends with a lot of cops, so they know who I am by my father's name. My dog was still barking furiously. I'd honestly forgotten he was even there. His barking shook me back into reality. The cops soon arrived and told the girls to leave. They actually walked away. I wasn't sure what to make of that. I never heard of them just walking away. Maybe they have their own fears, cops being one of them. The cops looked shocked when they first started talking to the girls but eventually got them to leave. I realized I was really late to my sister's concert. In a panic, I grabbed my shoes and everything and drove over to the school. On a positive note, her concert was great. The choral sounded beautiful. I was terrified to go home after, with reason of course. I truly cannot make heads or tails of my experience. Let me tell you though, if you ever run into these children, you'll regret answering the door. Whatever you do, don't look into their eyes. It's like they have some sort of hypnotizing power. You'll feel dizzy and sick. You'll forget your run-in with these inhuman children. Number two, black-eyed children and a demon. This occurred approximately three years ago and still haunts me on a regular basis to this day. I thought perhaps I was alone in this encounter, but
but recently saw a story about black-eyed kids while surfing the web and realized others have had similar experiences. My encounter happened in late June in the middle of the night, shortly after I had fallen asleep. I had spent the earlier part of the day gardening and sprayed around the house to control mosquitoes, which I thought might have caused me to hallucinate this experience. I also lived alone at the time. Anyway, I went to bed and at some point was woken up by the sound of children giggling and playing outside my house in the middle of the night. I lived in a one-story ranch home and could hear them playing and tapping on the windows in the front of the house. I peeked out the blinds to see the kids and they appeared to be three Asian kids under the age of 10. I don't remember what the boy was wearing, but the girls were in black dresses like they had just come from some kind of event. They had ear-length jet black hair with bangs. I was in my PJ, so I decided to ignore them and pretend they were not there, hoping they would realize they're in the wrong place and go away. Then they started knocking on the door, persistently. I figured they must have seen me and were not going to go away, so I answered the door. The three kids were there and an adult facing away on the sidewalk. They insisted that they lived at my house and that they needed to come in. I told them that they had the wrong house. Then they asked if I knew some person and said they were coming to meet him and again insisted that they come in. Again, I replied that they must be confused that it was just me here and I don't know them and they don't belong in my house. There are many Asian families in my neighborhood so I thought they might be arriving in town later to visit someone and have the wrong address. I then shut the door. Again there was a knock. I opened it and this time it was the adult standing in front of the kids. At this point, I must have noticed the eyes because I became extremely terrified. There were also a few additional family members now gathered on the sidewalk to my house. He looked to me like a Chinese, Japanese older man with a thin, long mustache and wore sunglasses at night and a black suit. Again, he said that they lived there and they were meeting someone else and insisted that I let them in because they had traveled a long way. At this point, something clicked in my brain and I stared back at the man and very firmly told him I knew who he was and that he did not belong here and went to shut the door. At the instant that I said that, the man showed his true form which was some sort of demon or beast. He or it screamed or roared in my face, grabbed me by the neck and pinned me against the wall enough to knock the wind out of me. I wish I could give a better description of what it looked like, but the second I saw a change, I closed my eyes and began to pray as hard as I could and focus only on the praying and block out this thing that had pinned me against the wall. It was the only thing I could do, because I was so sure it was going to kill me at that moment. Not sure what happened next, but I woke up in the morning in my bed. However, my neck was stiff like I had whiplash for days and my front door was ajar. Every single night after this incident, I could not go to bed without putting a chair with a 20 pound weight on it in front of the door. I also had to push the recliner in front of the patio. Luckily, I moved from that place. Number one. Brian Bethel's Black-Eyed Children Encounter On a spring or summer evening in 1996, as so many things do, it all started out innocently. My internet service provider used to have offices in a shopping center before they moved to their lush accommodations elsewhere. 
there was a drop box at the original location. The monthly bill was due, and thus, there, but for the grace of the net, I went. It was about 9.30 p.m. when I left from my relatively isolated apartments. It's about 10 to 15 minutes or so to downtown. Right next to Camelot Communications' old location is a buck fifty movie theater. At the time, the place was featuring that masterwork of modern film, Mortal Kombat. I drove by the theater on the way into the center proper and pulled into an empty parking space. Using the glow of the marquee to write out my check, I was startled to hear a knock on the driver's side window of my car. I looked over and saw two children staring at me from the street. I need to describe them with the one feature you can guess what it was that I didn't realize until about halfway through the conversation cleverly omitted. Both appear to be in that semi-mystical stage of life children get into where you can't exactly tell their age. Both were boys, and my initial impression is that they were somewhere between 10 and 14. Boy number one was the spokesman, and boy number two didn't speak during the entire conversation, at least not in words. Boy number one was slightly taller than his companion, wearing a pullover hooded shirt with a sort of gray checkered pattern and jeans. I couldn't see his shoes. His skin was olive colored and had curly medium length brown hair. He exuded an air of quiet confidence. Boy number two had pale skin with a trace of freckles. His primary characteristics seemed to be overlooking around his primary characteristics seemed to be looking around nervously. He was dressed in a similar manner to his companion, but his pullover was a light green color. His hair was a sort of pale orange. They didn't appear to be related, at least directly. Oh great, I thought. They're gonna hit me up for money. And then the air changed. I've explained this before, but for the benefit of any new lurkers out there, right before I experience something strange, there's a change in perception that comes about which I describe in the above manner. It's basically enough time to know it's too late. So there I was, filling out a check in my car, which was still running, and in a sudden panic over the appearance of two little boys, I was confused but an overwhelming sense of fear and unearthliness rushed in nonetheless. The spokesman smiled and the sight for some inexplicable reason chilled my blood. I could feel fight or flight responses kicking in. Something I knew instinctually was not right, but I didn't know what it could possibly be. I rolled down the window very, very slightly and asked, Yes. The spokesman smiled again, broader this time. His teeth were very, very white. Hey, mister, we have a problem, he said. His voice was that of a young man, but his diction, quiet, calm, and something I still couldn't put my finger on, made my desire to flee even more greater. You see, my friend and I want to see the films, but we forgot our money, he continued. We need to go to our house to get it. Want to help us out? Okay. Journalists are required to talk to lots of people, and that includes children. I've seen and spoken to lots of them. Here's how that usually goes. Uh, mister, can I see that camera? I... I won't break it or anything, I promise. My dad has a camera and he lets me hold it sometime. And I took a picture of my dog. It wasn't very good because I got my finger in the way and add in some feet shuffling and or body swaying and you've got a typical kid talking to a stranger. In short, they're usually apologetic. People generally teach children that when they talk to adults, they're usually bothering them for one reason or another, and they should at least be polite. This kid 
was in no way fitting the mold. His command of the language was incredible, and he showed no signs of fear. He spoke as if my help was a foregone conclusion. When he grinned, it was as if he was trying to say, I know something, and you're not going to like it. But the only way you're going to find out what it is will be to do what I say. Uh, well, was the best reply I could offer. Now, here's where it starts to get strange. The quiet companion looked at the spokesman with a mixture of confusion and guilt on his face. He seemed in some ways shocked, not with his friend's manner, but that I didn't just immediately open the door. He eyed me nervously. The spokesman seemed a bit perturbed. I was still feeling like something was wrong with both. Come on, mister, the spokesman said again, smooth as silk. Car salesman could learn something from this kid. Now, we just want to go to our house, and we're just two little boys. That really scared me. Something in the tone and the diction again sent alarms off in my head. My mind was frantically trying to process what it was perceiving about the two figures that was wrong. Uh um was all I could manage. I felt myself digging my fingernails into the steering wheel. What movie were you going to see? I asked finally. Mortal Kombat, of course, the spokesman said. The silent one nodded in affirmation, standing a few paces behind. Oh, I said. I stole a quick glance at the marquee and at the clock in my car. Mortal Kombat has been playing for an hour. The last showing of the evening. The silent one looked increasingly nervous. I think he saw my glances and suspected that I might be detecting something was not above board. Come on, mister. Let us in. We can't get in your car until you do. You know? The spokesman said soothingly. Just let us in, and we'll be gone before you know it. We'll go to our mother's house. We locked eyes. To my horror, I realized my hand had strayed toward the door lock, which was engaged, and was in the process of opening it. I pulled it away, probably a bit too violently, but it did force me to look away from the children. I turned back. Er, um, I offered weakly and then my mind snapped into sharp focus. For the first time, I noticed their eyes. They were coal black, no pupil, no iris, just two staring orbs reflecting the red and white light of the marquee. At that point, I know my expression betrayed me. The silent one had a look of horror on his face and a combination that seemed to indicate A. The impossible had just happened and B. We've been found out. The spokesman, on the other hand, wore a mask of anger. His eyes glittered brightly in the half-light. Come on, mister, he said. We won't hurt you. You have to let us in. We don't have a gun. That last statement scared the living mess out of me, because at that point, by his tone, he was plainly saying, we don't need a gun. He noticed my hand shooting down towards the gear shift. The spokesman's final words contained an anger that was complete and whole, and yet contained in some respects a tone of panic. We can't come in unless you tell us it's okay. Let us in. I ripped the car into reverse, thank goodness no one was coming up behind me, and tore out of the parking lot. I noticed the boys in my peripheral vision, and I stole a quick glance back. They were gone. The sidewalk by the theater was deserted. I drove home in a heightened sense of panic. Had anyone attempted to stop me, I would have run through and faced the consequences later. I bolted into my house, scanning all around, including the sky. What did I see? Maybe nothing? More than some kids looking for a ride? 
Maybe nothing more than some kids looking for a ride? And some really funky contacts? Yeah, right. A friend suggested that they were vampires with the old let us in bit and compelled response to open the door. That and the we'll go see our mother thing. I'm still not sure what they were, but here's an epilogue I find chilling. I talk about Chad a lot. He's still my best friend, my best ghost hunting companion and all around cool guy. He recently moved to Amarillo, but at the time this happened, he was still living in San Angelo of Rampage, of Rampage fame. So I called him, talked to him briefly. He had two female friends with him at the time, both professing some type of psychic ability. I started telling him the story, leaving out the part about the black eyes for the kicker. One of the women, we were on a speakerphone, stopped me. These children have black eyes, right? She asked. I mean, all black. Er, yes, I said. I was a bit taken aback. Hmm, she said. One night last week, I had a dream about children with black eyes. They were outside my house wanting to be let in, but there was something wrong with them. It took me a while to realize it was the eyes. I hadn't even gotten as far as them wanting to come in. What did you do? I asked. I kept the doors and windows locked, she said. I knew if they came in, they would kill me. She paused. And they would have killed you too if you'd let them into your car. And that's it. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. If you have a suggestion for a future list, please let us know on YouTube, on Facebook, or Twitter. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Unexplained Possibilities for more content like this. I'm Melvin the Crimson Taurus, and I'll catch you next time.